Hello, patrons of Gaming Wildlife. This is Review Roulette. <laughs> Today, I am going to be doing a review of Spider-Man 2, the game. To be more specific, I am going to be talking about why I could not finish Spider-Man 2, the game. This was, by far, one of the best movies out of the five that currently exist. Out of all the iterations, both the Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield movies, this one was the best. This one had the best building of characters, the best story, the best villains. Sam Raimi introduced potential future villains without pointing them out or interrupting the story. The relationship between Peter Parker and Mary Jane had positive momentum and it was a good movie, but not as good a game. I know some people really love the web-slinging portion of the game, but as a person who exclusively moves on a two-dimensional plane, I found it frustrating. It took extra buttons and coordination, as well as a sense of direction that I unfortunately do not possess. On top of that, the NPCs are shits. They say the most repetitive, unpleasant things possible. The most prominent line is, get a job. You can hear this everywhere even when you're in the air. This is really annoying when you're a superhero and you're rescuing people. I know it was in the comics, but it wasn't in every single panel of the comics. It wasn't in every single scene in the movie. And you can hear this everywhere, even when you're in the air. This is especially unpleasant considering how many muggings you are required to stop. There was definitely a lot of that in the comics and in the movie, but there were also people who genuinely loved Spider-Man and appreciated him. But back to those muggings. One of the things that makes Spider-Man a great superhero is that he isn't above helping the little guy. He stops muggings, he helps little old ladies across the street, he stops people from falling off buildings, and he identifies with people who get bullied. The comics don't focus on him doing that stuff, and neither do the movies. They show him doing that stuff in montage. You know, it gets done and that's what his day is mostly composed of, but it isn't a whole two hour movie devoted to that stuff. We watch Spider-Man to see him fight supervillains. Muggings are boring. They are over in three seconds because the muggers are laughingly outmatched. It's also pretty tiring the way Peter is perpetually late for everything. This is an awesome use of Bruce Campbell though, although he comes across as really mean. The graphics are good considering the time period, but I could have done with significantly more contrast, you know, so that you can identify yourself from the background. There is something disconcerting about his thighs. They are larger than any other single portion of his body. I'm not sold on the combat skill buying feature. It makes sense in a fantasy game where you need to buy equipment and gear, but it makes less sense in a Spider-Man game. There's a lot of fluff to this game. There are hundreds of side quests involving saving people from falling accidents, stopping gang violence, and stopping carjackings. In the end, I know it's a good game. Uh, other people, I've heard from many other people saying it's a very good game. I just didn't have a lot of fun playing it. And that's why I couldn't finish it. So I do highly recommend it to everyone else because I do know it is a good game, but it was not for me. Now we are going to roll for next time's review roulette. See where we go. Red 27. We are going to have Brett talk about why what we do in the shadows is amazing. See you then. Oh. Thank you.